Hey ICC friends, it's your girl Zaviera and welcome to our Sunday night chat. Please mind me, don't mind me because I was eating a mint and I looked down and saw the chat was getting ready to go live and I was like, oh snap, let me go ahead and bust a move real quick. But look at me, I'm prompt, I'm on time. It is Sunday night, so I hope all of you had a fantastic weekend. This is usually that time of the night when you start getting that anxiety because you know you got to go back to work tomorrow or you know that you got to tackle whatever Monday has in store for you. But I am excited and I'm happy to be here. And last Sunday we had so much fun on our chat that I decided that I'm going to start moving the Friday night chats to Sunday because it seems like Sunday is more of an available day for people. It's a day when people have more time to relax and just kick it. And we had such a great and fun time last time. So I see some of my beautiful ICC friends coming in. Hello, Stacy. Um, if you come in, say hi. Let me know where you, you know, you're logging in from. Let me know the city that you're checking in from. I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, so uh, many of you already know that, but just let me know where you're checking in from and how your weekend was. Um, before we get started, I would humbly ask that you share tonight's chat so that our other ICC friends know that we are chatting live and that we're going to get into some good stuff tonight. So I see Chris, I see my girl Gwenny. Um, so welcome and come on in. If this is your first time, let me try that again. If this is your first time chatting with us on a Friday or a Sunday night, we usually spend about an hour um, going over some of the top stories in entertainment and celebrity news on the site and sometimes some of the stories that I don't necessarily feel like writing, but you know. But before we get started, let me see. Okay, so I have um, Safika checking in from Newark. Sasha's checking in from California. DJ's checking in from Richmond. Danette is checking in from Indianapolis. Stacy's in A-Town with me. Um, Miss Cynthia, I'm, I'm guessing it's Tate Denise Cynthia, so I'm thinking you did your name backwards, but I don't know, I'm guessing. But she's checking in from the Chi-Town. And all of my chi Chicago ICC friends, I don't know why I'm so tongue-tied. Let me grab some water. Well, I thought I had my water right here. Where I put my water? Oh, here it is, it's hiding behind my chair. Um... All of my Chicago ICC friends, I just posted some tickets to the advanced screening of, what is it called? Um, yeah, Second Act with Jennifer Lopez. So if you are in the Chicago area and you would like to come out to the advanced screening, um, go ahead and enter. And some of the people who will enter will win like some special prize pack or something about the movie. So, mm. All right, so let me see. We got somebody checking in from B Moore from Brunswick, Georgia. Okay, shut up. Now, all of my people who checking in from Georgia, I got some issues with y'all because y'all don't never come and kick it with me. Shout out to Jocelyn from my hometown of Bridgeton, New Jersey. Okay, um, we got some more people from, from Chi-Town. Uh, we got Montgomery, Alabama. We got Houston in the building. We got Brooklyn in the building. You know what I'm saying? Spread love is the Brooklyn way. We got Tammy, Chicago. Um, checking in from heaven. Yeah, that's very um creative. All right, so thank you so much for you checking in. So tonight we're going to be talking about a few different things. But before we get started, I just want to let you all know, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the Ice Cream Combos YouTube channel. If you missed tonight's chat in any form, fashion, or minutes, or whatever have you, tonight's chat will be posted on the Ice Cream Combos YouTube page. What I do now is once we finish the chat, I snatch it down from Facebook and I send it over to YouTube. So if you come back tomorrow like, well, where the heck is the chat? Because I know she did it on Sunday night. It's on YouTube. All right. So be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, be sure to um, follow us on Instagram. Now, I posted a message the other day and I don't know. I'm just kind of burnt out on Instagram and it's for a number of reasons, but so now I'm just going to post and go on Instagram. Like I'm a post and I'm a go. Now Facebook, y'all know I'll come in the comments. I'll kick it with you, talk to you, you know, laugh at your comments and all that. And I was trying to do that on Instagram as well, but I kind of lost my thunder over at Instagram. So I'm just going to post and go. But it, unless I see something that I just can't ignore. But um, let's see. Oh, yep. Welcome to LaShonda. LaShonda made it to tonight's service on time. Welcome, baby girl. All right. So tonight we will be talking about a number of different things, but mainly our main topics will be um, Nene and Greg and their little social media tift. We will be talking about Salim Akil. Now, this story just took me out. And when I say it took me out, I'm talking about I was spread to the bed. I was just like, what in the world is going on? So there's so many layers and so much mess to this Salim Akil situation. So I'm definitely going to be digging into that a little bit. 
Um, we got some babies who have arrived. We got some indictments that have come down. And we got some people who issued apologies after talking reckless about other folks' children. So um, let's go ahead and get started. I see, you know, your comments coming in. If at any point you want to talk about something that I have not mentioned, please be sure to mention it in the comments. And I always try to keep one eye over on the side where the comments are. So if for any reason I start talking again and I miss you or miss your comments saying that there's something that you necessarily want to talk about, just run it back again. See, we got a lot of people in here from Chicago. Please go get those tickets to that advanced screening and then get a chance to win some special gift or another or whatever. All right, so first things first, I'm as sore as a groupie coming out of a rapper's hotel room because I was up until 4.30 in the morning last night painting and redecorating and rearranging Destiny's room. So if any point in time, like I just drift off into my happy place or I just start staring off into the distance, please just pray for me because I am totally exhausted. And now the child is sitting in her room waiting to put up the Christmas tree. So I'm just like, okay. All right, so I'm exhausted. My entire body is sore. Like I done went a few rounds, but you know, my arms are too short to box with God. So with that being said, let's get started. Um, first things first, I wanna begin tonight's chat by asking all of you to join me in prayer for Alex Banks. Now, Own has a fantastic, it's, a, it's like a dating show, but um, it's on Own, it's produced by Will Packer and it's called Ready for Love and it has... It started out with like a bunch of gentlemen, eligible bachelors, and a bunch of eligible bachelorettes from the city of Atlanta who just have trouble finding love. And they all come together and they mingle and co-mingle and see if there's some perfect matches in there. Well, this gentleman right here, Alex Banks, is one of the contestants on the show. Alex is tall. He's chocolatey. He's a gentleman. He's an overall great spirit, and he seems to be just an overall great guy. Well, last week I was totally, totally heartbroken to hear that he is in ICU and according to his mother, he is on life support. Now, when I went to his Instagram, Alex wrote, and it was right before Christmas, I believe, it, I mean, oh Lord, Thanksgiving. See, I told you I'm tired. It was right before Thanksgiving and he says something to the effect like, you know, I got the flu, you know, I ain't feeling good, your boy down, but... I'm going to be ready for Thanksgiving. So I was like, oh man, dang, he caught the flu. My first thought was he must have got the flu shot. And I'm not a medical professional, so please don't try to come for my medical degree because I don't have Nan. But I know from my personal experience, I only got the flu the one year that I got the shot. Now, it might have been a coinky dink, but well, all I'm saying is I don't get no more flu shots. And I mean, that's just where I'm at with it. But I'm not saying that. My seat feel like it's too high. Y'all, I just can't get comfortable. Okay. But I'm not saying that that's necessarily the case. I'm just saying that was my particular situation. So my first assumption was, oh man, he must've got the flu shot. And then a few days later, I see a post, I see a photo of him in a hospital bed hooked up to all these machines and people asking to donate to a GoFundMe. And I'm like, hold on, wait a minute. Wait, this happened way too fast. Like what is going on? So I found the GoFundMe. Um, Alex's mother, Veronica, wrote a post on the GoFundMe and she basically said that he was experiencing flu-like symptoms. He went to the hospital multiple times. They just gave him uh, IVs and sent him home. And it wasn't until they had to call an ambulance to rush him to the hospital for them to actually take him seriously. And now he's in the hospital on life support. She says that Alex has brain flu. When I posted this story, you know, one of the things that I love about my job is that I get to deal with the public all day long. One of the things that I hate about my job is I get to deal with the public all day long. Because sometimes you get to deal with people who may not necessarily have the same IQ as you do. Um, and then you get some people who are just, I don't know. But anyway, with that being said. When I posted that he had bird flu, if you're anything like me, you were like, damn, bird, I mean, not bird flu. See, look, brain flu. Bra Hold on, more water. I'm <laughs> Apparently, I got some type of flu too. Mm. So when I posted that Alex had brain flu, many of you, if you're anything like me, you were like, what the hell is that? Like, I've never heard of brain flu. Me, I automatically thought to myself, well, if you have flu in your body, then you have flu in your brain because nine times out of 10, it probably traveled to his brain. So that was me. I just left it there. 
But a lot of people started having questions and started questioning his diagnosis and started questioning brain flu and then started coming for me like, don't, um, did you mean such and such? Nah, I meant what I wrote. I wrote brain flu. That's what the hell I meant. I meant brain flu. And so people were coming at me, like I sat at my laptop and came up with this diagnosis and gave it to Alex. With that being said, I had, so the next morning I woke up and of course I'm, I'm not tripping off the people that said they never heard of brain flu because that was my first time hearing of it. But I'm like, okay, if a swine can have flu and a bird can have flu, I'm guessing a brain can get flu. Shoot me for thinking logically, right? Okay, whatever. So that night I went to bed and I was like, yo, like, this is something we never heard of before. I really wish I could reach out to a doctor and maybe have a doctor come on, you know, Facebook Live with me and we could talk about what brain flu is or if brain flu is just like another terminology for a, a different type of medical diagnosis with a different aphalophilactical name. So I was like, man, if I could just reach out to a doctor... And maybe we can, you know, talk about this and maybe offer some clarity to my ICC friends. Maybe let us know some symptoms to look out for. You know, if you have, if you suffer from severe headaches or if you're not feeling good for a long time or if you haven't this, 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 then you definitely need to go to the doctor because you all know I go to WebMD. Something could be, like my hand could be tingling. I'm going to go to WebMD and the next thing I know, I need my whole arm amputated, according to WebMD. So I wanted to have some legit answers for my ICCers who have questions. But the next day I came onto the page and there was a doctor there, an alleged doctor, because I'm in the business of using words like alleged. And she came in and my first thought was, damn, I'm glad I'm not her patient. She came in with the snarkiest sadiddy snooty ass attitude about the whole situation saying how she was a doctor and she does have a degree and she has and for anyone who has never heard of brain flu they are absolutely right because it does not exist then she went on to try to tell me what I meant to write and then she tried to sell some essential oil at the end of the post and I thought to myself I'm so glad I'm not her patient secondly I thought to myself I feel bad for anyone who is her patient. And lastly, I'm thinking, do we really need people with an attitude like this? Do we really need a, a person with an attitude like this in the medical profession? Most people who come in and go to the doctors, you go to the doctors because you don't know what's wrong. You go to the doctors because you're seeking help. You know, so if I come in and say, hey, my foot is hurting it feel like my toe about to fall off and then my doctor proceeds to tell me how I'm an idiot because there's no such thing as a toe fall off a lapicus. What? So I promptly blocked her ass and sent her right back to her medical office. I don't have time to play with people like this. If you can't come to the Ice Cream Combos page and offer something that is going to enhance or enlighten my ICC friends, then you need to get the hell on and go on back and study your degree, look at it, take pictures with it, put it on Instagram, flex for the gram, but you're not going to flex on my page and then try to sell my ICC friends some oil when you get done. That was absolutely ridiculous. But if there is someone who really has a medical degree, who really has some, well, no, I, if you got a medical degree, I'm not even playing with y'all who just be answering the phone in your doctor's office. I'm not playing with y'all. And I'd have much respect and love for you, but I need someone with a medical degree. I would really like to have someone come on the ICC, um, Facebook Live, and just talk to my ICC friends and just, you know what, not even just talk about the flu, brain flu, um, we get into all kind of health stuff. Let's talk about diabetes. Let's talk about hypertension. Let's talk about cholesterol. If you got something going on, if your booty itch on the left side, but the right side going numb, let's talk to the doctor about it and find out what may be the issue. So, because at the beginning of the year, y'all may remember, I encouraged everyone to do three things, get a journal, um, a gratitude book and to get a checkup. Some of y'all may remember this. Some of y'all that's been rolling with me for a long time may remember that. Those are the three things that I usually push at the beginning of the year. Um, so I got my checkup. I got my mammogram. I got my coochie gram. And I know it's called. <laughs> okay, maybe I shouldn't have said coochie gram. <laughs> but I was on a roll. I, I was going with the grams. You know what I'm saying? But anyway. Yeah, so you know, I got my pap, my annual exam. 
And um, so I just encourage, encourage all of you to go get some blood work up, go get your numbers, go, you know, know what your cholesterol count is, know what your heart rate is, you know, all these important things that are important to keep us here. Because I don't want to come to a Sunday night chat and have one of y'all tell me, yo, remember homie that checked in from such and such city? She gone. And so I don't want that. And I did have an ICC friend who got very, very sick and disappeared for a while. And it really, really bothered me. So I'm very, very glad to see that particular person back. So, um, yeah. So Alex, Alex is fighting brain flu. Um, apparently it happened very quickly. His mother said it is very aggressive. I went back today to get an update to see what I can, you know, find out to give you guys an update tonight because I just didn't want to regurgitate information that has already been out there for about a week. But she said that he's hanging in there. She used phrases like he's hanging in there. Um, she thanked everyone for the outpouring of love and support. I think his GoFundMe is up to maybe about five figures. They're looking for it. They're trying to raise a hundred thousand dollars because Alex is self-employed and he does not have health insurance. And I saw some people also was like, he ain't got no health insurance. A lot of self-employed people don't have health insurance. Um, and it's because it's just a lot of different legal tape or because their business, you know, they are self-employed, but their business may not be to the point where they can afford, you know, health care. And y'all already know how it's going down in the White House when it comes to, you know, health care and what's available to us and what's not available to us. So there was no judgment for me there as far as him not having health insurance. That's just like little Ray Ray and Pookie getting shot and y'all raising money and selling plates and selling t-shirts to burying. So, you know, a lot of us, we like to pass judgment, but a lot of us are not in a position right now for an unexpected emergency. I'm going to raise my hand. I ain't going to lie to kick it. If I had an unexpected emergency, child, my family would be like, if she make it out of this, I'm going to beat her ass. I mean, that's just where... <laughs> I'm, you know, and a lot of us, we want to live in the moment and we don't want to think about wills and we don't want to think about what's going to happen when we pass. And we don't want to think about all of these different things. But if we have families, if we have children, if we have spouses, you got to think about those things because life going to happen to all of us. We just don't know when we just don't know how. But with that being said, I done told y'all to get your wills together, go to the doctors, get a gratitude book and a journal book. But yeah, so just please join me and sending up prayers for Alex because it could have been any of us. And, um, you know, for those of you who are interested in donating to, you know, to help Alex's family cover these medical costs, because as you can imagine, having a baby costs a grip. Don't be on life support fighting for your life. So, you know, if you are in a position to help this family as they fight, you know, to, to get Alex through this and to take care of these medical costs and all those things that are, are incurring as he's fighting for his life, visit icecreamcombos.com. Um, there is actually a link in the description of tonight's chat where you can go ahead and get more information on how you can help Alex. Okay. All right. So just remember to send some prayers up for Alex, man. And he's such a great guy and it, it just hurts to, to hear that he's going through this. All right, so um, I guess next we'll go ahead and jump into Funky Dineva real quick. Um, oh, and shout out to all of you who are subscribing to our YouTube page. I'm getting the emails as we speak, so I definitely appreciate you for that. Um, Funky Dineva issued an apology this week because during one of his live tapings of um, the Queen's Court with T.S. Madison, and Tiffany Pollard. Um, some of you may be definitely familiar with the Queen's Court. It's a hilarious show um, that is on Facebook as well. And they sometimes do live shows here and there, right? Okay, so during one of the shows, they were talking about Jay-Z and Beyonce and their physical features. You know, some people think Beyonce is beautiful. Some people think Jay-Z sexy. And some people think Jay-Z is not sexy. It's, it's not very often that I hear people call Beyonce ugly. But Jay-Z be getting the smoke sometimes. But, you know, Jay-Z is a charismatic, very rich, wealthy man. So, depending on where you at in life, depending on his bank account numbers, depending on how cute he is. But with that being said, they were discussing the Carters and their level of attractiveness. And Funky Dineva blurted out that Blue Ivy was ugly. And people were like, ooh. And I saw the clip and I was like, ooh. Dineva. Now, I like Funky Dineva. I think Dine uh, Funky Dineva is funny. Um, I appreciate the fact that he's, he always speaks in his own personal truth, whether or not I agree with what he says. Um, and he always shoots straight from the hip. But 
you don't shoot at kids. And as a mom, you know, we talked about this on the Facebook page. You know, I like Dineva and all that. So I'm not here to like fire shots at him or try to drag him or anything of that nature. I just wanted to use this as a particular point to make that poor Blue Ivy, ever since she was born, people been coming for this child. First, they talked about her hair. Then they talked about her, you know, whether or not they thought she was a cute child. And now here we are again with Funky Dineva saying that Blue Ivy is ugly. And it hurt my feelings for the simple fact of, um, as a mom, I couldn't imagine. And, you know, Beyonce is a celebrity, and but she's still a human being and she's still a mom. And it just hurt my feelings to hear someone say something so mean and reckless about a child. Now, I I get that Funky Dineva was probably trying to crack a joke or tr probably trying to get a rise out of the audience, you know, whatever it is. But dang, like I'm on a level where it hurts my feelings when I see like those memes floating around of um, unique children. And, you know, when people take photos of people's children and turn them into memes and then people start clowning the kids and using the memes and all that. I cannot imagine being a parent who logs on to social media and I see a picture of my baby floating around and they done turn the baby, my baby into a meme because they think my baby funny looking or they think my baby ugly or they think my baby look weird and they done turn my baby into a meme. Like I block people every single day on the ice cream combos Facebook page. And you know, some people, I don't think they really realize they've been blocked. If you've ever come to the ice cream combos Facebook page and you can see all the posts and when you get ready to comment, you don't have an option to comment. You've been blocked from the page. Um, I don't block people all willy nilly. I usually just block people who I find to be offensive or I find that their energy is not the kind of energy that I want on the page. Um, and one of the number one reasons I will block you without hesitation or thinking twice, no hesitation, no demonstration, I'll block you in a heartbeat for talking about a baby. I blocked a girl last week because I posted a picture of Tia Maori's baby, Cairo, and everybody was like, oh my gosh, she's so cute, she's so cute, she's so cute. And the girl came in and was like, waterhead, block it. If you thought the baby had a waterhead, then just keep it pushing. You don't have to log on and call somebody's child a water, like say somebody's child have a waterhead. Like I'm just saying, I see my own baby pictures and I wasn't out here uh, shutting down daycare centers with my dazzling good looks. So I'm not going to talk about someone else's baby. And I just think it's, it's very, it says a lot about you as a human being, as an adult, when you just talk down on someone else's child. Children have no say so in how they get here. They are here and they just going to do their best. You know, their parents got to do what they got to do till the child get old enough to try to take care of themselves. So it, I just found that to be um, disheartening. But I appreciate Funky Dineva for issuing an apology. One of, my, I, one of my media friends asked me if I thought Funky Dineva's remarks regarding Blue Ivy would actually impact um, his following. And I thought to myself and... I don't think so. I don't think so. Because people know how he just says whatever comes to his head. So I think people are going to be hot. I think people are going to be mad for a minute. I mean, the beehive swooped in and tried to cyber kill the man. So, you know, I think there was a lot of backlash. I think that he maybe had lost a fan or two or three or four. But overall, I don't think it's going to taint his brand in the long run. But I think that he did learn a major lesson from this, especially. In, and, you know, a lot of times people who don't have kids don't have that level of discernment um, of not talking reckless about other people's children. I, I find that a lot, too. Some of the most pe ignorant people talking about kids don't have any. Because trust and believe if someone said that about their child, they'd be somewhere ready to fight, twirling and all kind of other stuff. So, yeah, so Funky Dineva issued his apology. If you didn't see the video of him speaking about Blue Ivy or his apology video, feel free to visit IceCreamConvos.com and check that out. But um, it appears that he's he's learned his lesson um, and he recognizes the fact that he went too far. So I can't drag him for that. You know, if more people recognize their wrongdoings and took responsibility for them, maybe we'd be in a better place. Speaking of responsibility and wrongdoing. So, Nene Leaks took to social media and blasted Greg 
Greg had posted like it was some like Brothers Keepers Day or something. You know, something for the bros. And Greg posted this message and he was like, you know, something, shout out to all my bros and I love you and something, something, this, that, and the other. And Nene came in and apparently she was fed up and sick and tired of her husband, Greg Leakes. She came into the post and basically told Craig, Greg, that he needs to walk it like he talk it and maybe he should live, <laughs> maybe he should be what he posts in, in layman terms, right? And everybody was like, Nene, did you just come for your cancer stricken husband on social media in front of all of us. So then she goes on, she takes to Twitter and she starts talking about how Greg is so grouchy and he's so mean and he's so evil and that we have no idea what she goes through with him. And she, you know, we have no idea what he, she deals with, with Greg. And, you know, people were responding like, Nini, but your husband is fighting cancer. And, you know, some of my ICC, ICC friends started sharing some of their personal experience with loved ones who have been fighting cancer and who have been battling cancer. And, you know, they one of the main consensuses between all of them was that when you're battling something, it changes your personality. You know, some people, they're angry, you know, that they're going through this. Some people... You know, the chemo, the radiation, it changes some people's personalities and all that. So people were trying to tell Nene, like, look, your husband needs you now more than ever. Like, he's battling cancer. He he doesn't know. He He's dealing with a level of uncertainty. He doesn't know what the future holds for him. And he's counting on you and he's leaning on you and you on social media, Aaron D. Map. And so Nene made a point to stress that this is behave, this particular behavior is not anything new. He was doing this stuff before he got <laughs> diagnosed with cancer, apparently. He was being mean and grouchy and evil. Now, the mean and grouchy, I could attribute it to Greg's age because I think Greg, Greg is in his seasoned years. I'm not calling nobody old, but I'm just saying he's in his seasoned years, right? Because we all hope to get seasoned one day, right? So I'm guessing that, you know, it may have in part to do with his seasoned years. Or maybe some of my ICC friends suspected that when you live with someone who is grouchy, mean, and evil, it may tend to rub off on you and you may become grouchy, mean, and evil. Um, their words, not mine. But with that being said, I was just very, very, very disappointed in Nene. And Nene is one of our ICC friends, but I was very, very hurt because I am a firm believer in keeping your personal business off of social media. There are days, hold on. There are days when my husband get on my last black ass nerve. But I'm not going to get on social media and tell y'all about it. I'm not even going to post a subliminal. Because some subliminals you just might as well had just write, write the person name in it. So I'm not going to get on here and be like, you know, when you get married to certain people. And certain people that you're married to get on your nerves. Like, keep the subliminals as well. Work out your stuff in-house. Why are you telling me about it? So by getting on social media, and I know there are times when you just need to vent, right? But every Sunday night, I watch her kiki and kick it with about five, six other girls on television. And they throw drinks at each other and they cuss each other out at a round table and they go on vacations together. You had about four or five different options that you could have called to talk about that besides us. Because once you pour it into the public, now you're opening the floodgates for me to get on Instagram and be like, girl, I know because my husband get on my nerves too. And what you need to do is hide one of every one of his shoes and let him search for every time he try to get dressed. He only got one shoe and he can't find the rest. Now you're bringing in negative energy from the masses. You're bringing in opinions from people who should not have a space or a thought or a place to give you any type of thought into your marriage. That's your marriage. That's your second time around. The first time y'all got divorced, which y'all get divorced for the first time? Mm, okay. So now y'all decided to get back together. Now, if you, you apparently couldn't live without him because you divorced him and then you got back with him or the funds got low, but it's whatever. Y'all got back together. So apparently y'all loved it. And I said loved it, E.D., Y'all loved it. Each other enough to get back together to try to make this thing work. So work it out. Work it out. There are counselors. There are therapists. There's counselors. Like, we don't need to know about this. And it's embarrassing. Imagine fighting cancer and then your wife blowing your whole spot up online. And Greg ain't no 
get online, air somebody out type of person. I was surprised that he even brought cameras in and let us all up in his cancer business. But I know why. Because storylines are important. So I understand why the camera was following him through the hospital. I even felt a way, and this is my first time saying it, but I felt a way when Nene was like live streaming from his doctor's appointments at the cancer center. I felt a way about that because we don't know what that doctor was about to tell Greg. We don't know what Greg was about to, we don't know, that's none of our business. The only job we have to do when it comes to Greg and his cancer is to pray for that man, keep him uplifted in prayer. I don't, I shouldn't have access to his private doctor's appointment. He shouldn't have to have cameras follow him into a, a private doctor's appointment. But if that's what he chooses to do, um, you know, if he, he and his wife are in agreement that this is what they're going to do for the Real Housewives of Atlanta. This is what they're going to do for the TV show to get ratings for people to tune in to see, oh, my God, what's going on with Greg? Or, oh, let me see if Greg looks sick. Let me see if Greg look well. If that's what you two decided to do together, then fine. But me, myself, personally, I would never put someone I love through that. I don't care what how many dollar amounts are behind the check. I'm just I wouldn't do it. That's me. But again, I'm not one of those people who like to air stuff out on social media and trust. And I'm not going to sit up here and act like there haven't been moments when I wanted to get on social media and blast something out. I'm not going to act like it haven't been times when I wanted to air somebody out on social media to let all y'all know how grimy and shady someone is. But at the same time, what was that going to do? What is that going to do? All it is going to do is let y'all come in and chime in and be like, yes, F that B or, you know, oh, is she dead wrong? Or What's the point? What's the point? So Nene wrote all this stuff about how Greg is mean and evil and grouchy. And then people started swooping down on her. And even on the ICC Facebook page, people were going in on her like, I, how could you? And I was disappointed. I said it. I was. I raised my hand. I was disappointed that she would do that. Well, Greg took the social media and he asked people to pray for Nene. He said, don't tear her down. Pray for her. I'm about to read to you what he wrote. Because I was like, oh, Greg. It says, and he wrote, I never even thought about someday we might be in this position, but here we are in the struggle of life. Damn. This woman right here has put a mountain on her back and carried it with grace. She's given so much of herself. You, Nene, steps up to the plate, bats, and knocks it out of the park every time. Something a lot of women can't do or wouldn't. So was she... So what? She hit a wall and her cup run over. Pray for her. Encourage her. Lift her up. What good is tearing down going to do? I'm not bed stricken and I'm not dying of cancer. I'm kicking cancer's ass. I said, well, okay, Greg, then kick it. Can he kick it? Yes, he can. So I thought that was very big of Greg. Rather than argue back and forth with his wife on social media, which we've seen couples do in the past. He took the high road on his wife. He went to social media and came for the people who was coming for her after she came for him. He like, look, he understands where the frustration is coming from. Apparently, he recognizes whatever this mean, grouchy, alleged evil activity he's been partaking in. He recognizes that there may be some truth to it. So he's asking us to uplift her in prayer and to encourage her and not to tear her down. So I have a whole new respect for Greg for that because I don't know if I would have been there with it after you tried to embarrass me publicly because you mad or because I was out of pocket. I've been out of pocket plenty of times. If my husband went on social media and told y'all every time I was out of pocket, y'all y'all would only come to my page to see if he's still with me. But I mean, we're all human. We all have moments. We all get frustrated. We all feel like, you know what? I can't take this mess no more. We all feel like, child, I'm about to pack his bag and sit it out back and lock him out after he go to Walmart. So we've all felt like that at some point in time. But where she crossed the line was taking it to social media. When I'm sure that Negro was in the house with her somewhere where she could have walked in his room and told him. 
rather than telling all of us. That's like it. Like if I have an issue with my husband and I wait until all of y'all get here to tell him, just pull him to the side and tell him. So, you know, shout out to Greg for that. And, you know, I'm still lifting Greg up in prayer too, you know, cause Greg has his own battle that he's fighting and I'm gonna pray for Nene. I, well, you know, I got prayer for Nene cause Nene is Nene, Nene gon' Nene. And that's about it. Nene is gone Nene. All right, so before we get into the Salim Akil story, because I'm going to have to take a sip of water for that one. I just want a few other things I just wanted to mention. Congratulations to Priyanka Chopra and Nick Jonas. They are married. Now, they had two marriages. They had two weddings. Because <laughs> you're like, two marriages, girl, tell the tea. No, it was two weddings. They got married in India. First, they got married on Saturday and they had an American Christian wedding. And then they got married again today, but they had a Hindu style wedding. But listen, he fine, she fine, they married and dumb baby's going to be sure enough pretty. Now, with that being said, I sent my homegirl a text message and I sent the same text message to my husband. I said, Nick Jonas got engaged and married Priyanka Chopra within four months. Now, I'm going to add two more months. Maybe no. I feel like it was maybe a little bit more than two months. But they wasn't dating a year before he put a ring on it. So he proposed and married that woman within four months. Some of us have been engaged longer than our kids been born. Some of us have been engaged for quite some time. And I just wanted to point out the fact to my homegirl and to my husband, how Nick Jonas knew exactly what he wanted. He knew exactly what was required of him if he wanted to have this woman in his life and have this woman as his wife. And he stepped up to the God darn plate and wasn't playing no games. And he over there in, in India and he partaking in the Hindu culture and all that stuff. And he like, okay, he, he got with the damn program. Meanwhile, back in Harlem, Joelle Santana proposed to Kim Bella after a decade, after his teeth fell out, after cheating on her 511,000 times, after three youngins, and then proposed to her in the middle of a concert and put the ring on the wrong hand. And I was like, okay. Now, as far as putting the ring on the wrong hand, that can happen because especially if you're nervous or if you just don't know what hand the ring's supposed to be on, a lot of times us ladies kind of help him out by just throwing the left hand out like, ba bam this one, baby, this, that, that one right there. Wait, this finger. Yeah, I don't have my ring on right now. I had got out the shower right before I got on. But so some of us, you know, we kind of alley-oop it to the man, you know, by giving him the right hand. She handed him the right hand and that's the hand he put it on. But I just found it interesting. And some of y'all may get where I'm going with this, but I found it interesting. And I'm sure some of you, if you take a closer look, you'll find it a little interesting too. So congratulations to those two. I'm sure they are the happiest people on the planet right now. Um, we got an indictment, Amber Geiger, the police officer, the ex Dallas police officer who apparently don't know where the hell she live and she just walk in other people houses and just kill them willy-nilly yeah she got indicted for the murder of Botham Jean so here's the thing and for those of you who don't know this particular story this Dallas ex-Dallas police officer came home from a shift allegedly went to the wrong apartment and when Botham Jean opened the door or she entered his apartment she shot this man dead Talking about she thought he was a robber in her house or whatever. Like how you don't know. I have been drunk. I have been drunk, drunk. But I always made it to the right house. I always made it to the right house. Sis allegedly wasn't even intoxicated. Sis allegedly wasn't even under the influence of anything. I'm just saying. She just, I'm just saying. Botham's mother said that she feels like Amber purposefully and intentionally meant to harm and kill her child. 
And you remember after this incident happened, then there were the rumors and this conspiracy theories that they were in a relationship and allegedly pictures popped up of them together and all kind of stuff like that. I didn't really feed into that, even though there may be some validity. Vil vil I didn't feed into that, even though there may be some validity. I can't validity. That's it. That's it. Validity to it. I just, I don't know when something tragic like this happens. I try my best not to start going down the rabbit hole. Um, I just really try not to do that out of respect for the family, because if it's not true, then imagine having the family have to deal with that and have to hear that and so on and so forth. So, but yeah, so she got indicted. That's a start. An indictment is a start. We've seen several people get indicted and get acquitted. So I will wait when she gets charged and arrested and sentenced. Wait, I said that wrong. She's She's been charged. She's been indicted. When she gets convicted and sentenced, then I shall rejoice because the family will have justice. But beforehand, before that, nah, I'm just going to keep circle. I'm going to stay in a circle in pattern. Keep my emotions at bay because there have been so many times that I have been disappointed and hurt and let down by the justice system. So with that being said, Lyr Lyrica Anderson and A1 welcome their baby boy, Ocean Zion Bentley. And this is the picture that they shared with us of Ocean Zion Bentley. Um, The couple shared this particular photo here and said... Well, let me back up. They created an Instagram page for the baby. They said once the page gets 100,000 followers, then they'll show us the baby. Sis. Bro. Dang. I just got done saying not to say nothing about nobody's baby. Okay, this is not about the baby. This is about the parents. Um... A couple things follows on social media mean that much to you that you would barter a photo of your baby for 100,000 follows. First things first, why does your baby need an Instagram page? And I know some people make Instagram pages for their babies. They're hyped. They're excited. They want a place where people can go and look at pictures of their baby. But at the same time, why? <laughs> okay. So with that being said, let me tell you what they're actually doing. They are capitalizing on the fact that some of y'all still don't believe that's A1's baby. They are capitalized. They're trying to capitalize off the fact that some of y'all expect that baby to look like Safari. Even though a DNA test was taken, some of y'all still expect to see that baby or want to see that baby. So you could be like, mm -mm, that's Safari's nose. Those are Safari's shifty eyes. That's Safari's baby. That's what they are banking on. And that's what many of us, because I'm curious to see the baby only because I love seeing pictures of people's babies. Listen, Gabrielle Union and Dwayne Wade had their baby. They ain't ransoming off a, view, a, a, a quick look at their baby for follows and stuff on social media. So my thing is, okay, dang. I want to say this so that y'all fully understand what I'm saying. But I don't want it to seem like I'm trying to come for little ocean. Okay. I'm just going to say it and then I'll explain it down or y'all just help me through this. More important babies have been born. Okay, stop. Let's pause. I hope y'all I hope y'all understand what I mean by that. Like, not saying that baby ocean is not, imp not important. What I'm saying is, like, we got, like, Meghan Markle, Meghan Markle is pregnant. That's, like, that's what I'm saying. When her baby arrives, people will be clamoring to see this child. Okay? So, what I'm saying is, Meghan Markle gonna show us that baby. Meghan Markle ain't gonna say... Well, once the royal palace has 100,000 followers, I will allow you to see our baby girl. Like, 
Lyrica and A1, y'all have tried it to the highest level of tried activity. Like, <laughs> y'all, like, I know there are some people out here who are sincerely and genuinely pressed to see your baby, but I'm not one of them. I'm just... So basically, that's what... And there's no guarantee that once they get this one... Let me let me take a look and see if Baby Ocean made it to 100,000 followers. We may have a breaking picture up here. Let me see. Let me see where Baby Ocean at. Ocean. And some of y'all, listen, my ICC friends that said, is the baby name Ocean or is it Ocean or Ocean or, okay, let's see. Lyrica Anderson. Okay, I just love the fact that, okay, let's see. He's at 91,800. Here it is. Wait, can y'all see there it is. That's the page right there. That's it right there. And look what she's doing. She's promoting her single. Where, where's my finger? There it is. Wait, where's my finger? Right there. She's promoting her single. <laughs> That's what she's really doing. But, you know. But 91,000 people, 91,800 people fell for the okie doke. She ain't doing nothing but promoting music. So, but congratulations to them. Um, they've been through hell and high water to get this here baby. And I mean, people would be curious to see the child if your husband took a DNA test while you was pregnant. How well is that? That your husband got a DNA test while y'all pregnant. I wish a spouse would come to me talk about a DNA test for my baby. But if that's the type of marriage that y'all engaging in, if that's the type of activities y'all engaging in, I mean, that's what it's going to be. But congratulations to them and um, emoji baby. But, you know, it is what it is. All right. So I think we talked about everything else that I pulled out. So let's go ahead and get to Celine. Y'all, this hurt. And I'm saying it hurt like a disappointment hurt. Now, everything that I'm about to say is under the alleged umbrella because I wasn't there, nor did I see it. But um, also, I'm just going to put some disclaimers out here because a lot of times I'll say something and then... After the chat is over, I'll be like, I shouldn't have said that. Maybe I should edit that. So I'm just going to go ahead and put my disclaimers out ahead of time because the Lord and y'all know my heart. I hope anyway. And so I don't want to sound as if I'm victim blaming at all. This is going to be my victim blaming dis like disclosure or my statement. Um. I don't want to sound like I'm victim blaming, but I'm going to talk to y'all about this particular situation the same way I talk to my friends in private about it. Okay? Okay. Let's move on. So, Salim Akil. Salim Akil, if you don't know Salim, you know his work, most definitely. Salim Akil is responsible for giving us shows like Black Lightning, Girlfriends. Well, between Salim and his wife, Mara Brock Akil, because we're going to put some respect on her name, all three of us. So, between he and his wife, Mara Brock Akil, they've given us fantastic shows like Girlfriends, Black Lightning, and most recently, Love Is. Love Is is a fantastic series on OWN and if you will watch it, you will feel your heart bursting in your chest like this as you watch. The show is loosely based on the marriage of Mara Brock Akil and Salim Akil. I had the pleasure of meeting Salim Akil earlier this year when he was in town promoting Black Lightning for the ATV Fest. And when I met Salim, when he walked in, I was like, yo, that's freaking Salim Akil. So I was having two yo moments. No, I was having three, four. I was having four yo moments simultaneously. My first yo moment was like, oh my God. Oh yes, and the game. Thank you so much, Cook. First I was like, yo, there goes Salim Akil. Then I was like, yo, there goes Scooter. Cause you know, Black Lightning is Scooter from Living Single. Depending on how old you are, you'll know that. But I was like, there goes Scooter. And then I was like, oh my gosh, look at China and McLean. My baby done grew up. And then I was like, now Fisa Williams, good Lord. Let me tell you something. There are some very beautiful people on this planet. And you know, we're all beautiful, right? Because God made us in his image. God made us special and he created us. He was like, okay, there you go. He's just making all of us like. But then there are some people that God was like, you know what? Hold on a second. Let me take a little bit more time making this one right here. And I'm going to go ahead and smooth her forehead out. 
hook her butt up a little bit, get her right in the front. All right, let me smooth her hips, make them even, but the hip ratio, because some of y'all walk around here looking like a lollipop because your butt's too big and your legs too little. But God made us all beautiful, right? But it was some of us that he took a little more extra time on. And I don't have to point out those people because I'm sure you can see and recognize these people. Now, Fisa Williams is one of them. Now, I watch Black Lightning. And I'm like, oh, Nafisa is such a pretty girl. You know, oh, Nafisa, you know, I was like, okay, look at the beautiful, beautiful black family on Black Lightning. You got the daddy, you got the mama, you got the two daughters. Okay, beautiful black family with superpowers. But when I was at ATV Fest and Nafisa Williams walked in that room, I was like, I'm getting ready to become a, a, a member of the LGBTQ community. That girl is so freaking pretty. That one of my LGBT friends in the media looked at me and was like, I'm about to come back to y'all side. Well, not come back. He said, I'm about to come to y'all side because he was never on our side to begin with. But he said, I'm about to come to y'all side. Like she about to, she about to bring me back. That girl was drop dead gorgeous. I was trying to interview that child and I was sitting there looking at her and I said, you know what? I'm just going to sit here and stare at you for a minute and then we'll get on with the interview. And she cracked up laughing and she was like, oh my gosh, she was like, you're so pretty. I was like, don't tell me that. I'll be done call my husband, told me I ain't coming home no more. But she is absolutely gorgeous. But back to Celine. So I'm sitting at the table. It's me, Celine, and um, I don't know why I can't think of Black Lightning's real name. Somebody help me out in the comments. But I'm going to call him Scooter. So it's the three of us sitting there and we're chatting. I'm talking about Black Lightning, talking to, talking to them, because Black Lightning came out, you know, a little bit before we got Black Panther. So I'm like, yo, we got the Black Lightning, we got the Black Panther, everything is, like, we out here, we Black excellence. So Celine was cracking up laughing, but there's one thing that I noticed about him. Um, Scooter was like more at ease and easygoing and laughing and friendly, and Celine was friendly but Salim like had this, it was like an energy about him, like a domineering type of energy. Like when you, you ever talk to somebody and you be like, yo, don't say the wrong thing. Like you feel like you better not F up while you talking to him. That's the way I felt when I talked to Salim. He wasn't mean. He wasn't rude. He was letting me call him OG. I was like, yo, I'm gonna just Cress Williams. Thank you, Giselle. Cress Williams is Scooter. So I just kept calling Salim OG because he an OG in the game. He gave us, see what I did right there? He an OG in the game. Okay. Y'all gonna walk with me. I, I'm killing myself tonight. Mm. So I'm like, yo, you an OG. So I just was the whole time I was interviewing him. So I was like, OG, OG this, OG that. I even got a picture with Salim, I believe. I do have a picture with Salim. And so I'll share that with y'all later. I put it in the comments of this uh, post. So I'm like, you know, OG this, OG that. But he he just kept, he has like this strong, quiet thing about him. Like strong and quiet. He don't waste words. He stays straight to the point. So I'm like, he cool, he cool. So then this comes, so Love Is comes out. And I'm like, yo, him and Mar Brock Akil, they are like couples goals. I have learned over the past couple weeks. To stop using the frame couples goals. Couples goals is only top layer. Until you get to people like Michelle and Barack. Then you can be like, okay, they couples goals. Okay, okay, okay. You know, because even when Michelle wrote her book, she ain't tell us nothing crazy about Barack that we would have to go ahead and put him on ice. So with that being said, I was like, yo, and then Love Is came out. And then we see that Love Is is loosely based off of their relationship. And then it's just like, it just reaffirmed this whole feeling of couples goals and so sis right here files a lawsuit against Celine saying that she was involved in a 10-year affair with Celine and not only was she involved in a 10-year affair with Celine he abused her physically emotionally verbally and sexually Throughout this 10-year affair, because y'all know he married to Mara Brock Akil, right? Okay. So, and him and Mara been married about twin, twin, twin years. Okay. That's 20 for those of you that don't know the twin, twin, twin. Okay. So anyway, 
So that math ain't adding up because then that means you. Mm -mm. Okay. So she was carrying on this 10 year affair, alleged 10 year affair with Celine. And she said that he slapped her, strangled her, choked her, sexually assaulted her, forced her to give him oral sex on multiple occasions. At one point, she said he forced her to lick a wall in an underground parking garage. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all see this right here? That's the pigmentation that God blessed me with. Ain't no way on God's green earth, as long as I am this pigmented Human being, am I going to sit by and let somebody abuse me for 10 damn years? Somebody that I'm not even married to. Somebody that's somebody else's husband. Somebody else that I'm sleeping with on the side. Now, let me just back this up again. Ain't no way on God's green earth. As long as I'm pigmented in this color right here, as long as I am a woman of God, will I allow my husband to abuse me, let alone for 10 years? Now, I know this is not a shot at people who have been involved in a relationships where they have been abused, you know, and, and they have endured domestic violence. This just ain't for me. Okay. It's just... It's, Me and my husband been together for 18 years. We've been married for 11. That man don't even cuss at me. Let alone have me licking walls in a, in a underground parking lot. Is you crazy? She said she was at a hotel. The Roosevelt Hotel in LA, which is a very nice hotel. I stayed there once before. They were at the Roosevelt Hotel at a party. He made her go into the bathroom. And then he made her give him oral sex and this child this beige child right here with her hair cascading in the, in the wind right like that this beige child said that that man peed in her mouth what in the robert kelly hell is going on here like there there are certain there's certain things that just can't happen to me and i'm not saying that i'm immune from these type of things what i'm saying is they can't happen to me because i'm not going to allow it bro the first time you smacked me in my face while we was having sex and i didn't say smack me daddy you out the door. We done. We over and done with it because you're not going to be just bringing it back like here with the five fingers say to the face to me in the middle of me trying to get one off. No. What do you do? Like I have, I told one of my ICC friends, I have more questions about this particular situation than a college entry exam. She said, oh yes, I forgot to mention that. Yeah, that she, she was married as well. How are you smacking me, choking me, peeing in my mouth, not mouth, not mouth. I said mouth, mouth, you peeing in my, my mouth. Just how sway, like just how then, but that's not all. That's not all. She said that one time they were engaged in sexual intercourse and it was very, very painful. And she asked him to stop. And he said, oh, no, no, no. Take it. Okay. So now she's basically, in so many words, insinuating that she was raped. Just if any, if any of my ICC friends on this planet or another one can tell me why she would endure this type of abuse from Mara's husband for 10 years, I will give you all ears, eyes, nose, but not my mouth. I would just, I'll give you my full attention. Just make, make it make sense. Okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it make sense because I, I have an idea of why. Okay, so let me just lay everything out first real quick. So she says that he peed in her mouth. He made her give her oral sex on multiple occasions. She, he smacked her. He strangled her. He choked her. He threatened to bury her in the desert if she ever got pregnant, if she ever got married, 
or if she cheated on him with someone else. I'm about to be all over the place with this one. How a married man going to tell you not to cheat on him? I'm not even going to take it a step further and ask how dudes in jail <laughs> be calling to the house, collect and telling y'all what to do. I'm not even going to mess with that tonight. But just how do a married man tell you not to cheat on him? Just houseway. Just how? Okay, so with that being said, so he told her he would kill her. He threatened to kill her. He done smacked her, strangled her, peed in her mouth, make her give him oral sex. She licked a wall in a parking lot garage. Then she says they were at his house in Martha's Vineyard and he was giving her a lecture. And while he was giving her a lecture, he took three fingers and stuck it up her anus. I got questions. First question is, Three fingers into the anus. Is it this? Is it this? Or is it this? That's first things first. Secondly, how do you hold a conversation with three fingers in your anus? Because I've never... Is there a medical doctor, someone with a degree who wants to sell oil to come in and explain this to me? How do we hold a conversation? How, like, how can you think logically? And receive a lecture with, I guess you got to do it like this. Nah, I'm doing, I got weird fingers, so I don't know. Or is it the, the bottom three? Like, or is it eh, these three? Because, I mean, there's a couple combinations of three that you can get. But just how sway. All right, somebody gets sway on the phone. Somebody get job rule on the phone. Somebody let, just somebody tell me how. So she says that he stuck three fingers in her anus and gave her a lecture. Okay. But boys and girls, ladies and gents, pimps and professionals, hoochies and hustlers, we don't get a lawsuit until he allegedly swiped her script that she wrote and took portions of it and used it for Love Is, the show he created with his wife. Now you want to sue everybody. And now you want to tell me you done had pee in your mouth, fingers in your booty. You've been strangled and threatened to be buried in a desert. Now it's my business to know this. Now you want the world to know that you've endured all of this. But before he took that script. And before him and his wife made that show. That just got renewed for a second season. Before they made this successful show he and his own wife you we ain't have near one police report we ain't had near one svu law and order svu like none of that we ain't had none of that it wasn't until this show popped off and he iced you out and left you in the cold with a thin sweater that you want to go ahead and file a lawsuit and tell us about all y'all freaky adventures some that you willingly participated in and some that you allegedly willingly did not or unwillingly participated in. But at the same time, you willingly participated in a 10 year affair with a man. Now, if you had told me you was dating him for 10 days and he peed in your mouth and you had to cut him loose and then he stole your script, I would have been like, Celine, are you serious, bruh? But sis said 10 years. Diez años. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years. So my deepest and sincerest apologies if I'm offending anybody with this commentary, but I feel like sis was sleeping, allegedly sleeping with Celine and allegedly enduring all of this alleged abuse just like a groupie allows these rappers and anybody else that they want to try to get next to to come up off of how they allow them to do anything that they want to them 
She allegedly allowed this man to use and abuse her body for 10 years because she said in her own lawsuit, because I'm not putting words or pee in her mouth. She said in her own lawsuit that she stayed with him because she thought she loved him and that he would dangle acting opportunities and opportunities to create TV shows and movies and whatever else over her head like a carrot. Like, ooh, you almost had it. You got to be quicker than that. She said that he would dangle opportunities over her head to keep her in the relationship. So opportunities, sex, pee, penis, in the mouth, fingers, in the anus. You put them together, that's groupie activity. That is somebody who was effing for a come up. But when the come up didn't come, now we got a lawsuit. This is at so damn lutely ridiculous now it may sound like i'm going in on her but trust and believe salim ain't off the hook because if salim really did this stuff salim is pure hot unadulterated garbage my og ain't ish this man has a beautiful incredible talented wife who has given him beautiful children and they seem and appear to make great projects together. They create great content together. And meanwhile, back at the ranch. Meanwhile, back at Martha's Vineyard with three anuses, three fingers up the anus. How, just how you get three fingers in an anus though? Like, I just, I'm sorry, this is a very inappropriate conversation, but I'm just saying, like, I, my mind, like my, I'm, I'm literally doing this in my seat, like, like clenching, like, I just, what people will do for an opportunity, what people will do for a come up, what people will endure for a come up, what people will endure for an opportunity, what people will endure for some cash. Now, Salim sitting up here, his alleged mistress done sued his damn wife. She done filed a federal copyright infringement lawsuit against Mara, Salim, Own, now Oprah all tied up in the mess. Warner Brothers done launched an investigation all because he couldn't stay at home with his wife. Allegedly. Come on, man. I'm still like, just like my anus look like this. I can't. What? <sighs> I'm so, and I can't even imagine what Mara feel like. And you know, one of my f dear friends was like, do you think she knew? She had to know, right? Do you think she knew? Do you think she had suspicions? Do you think she was just pushing through it? Like some, so many strong black women do when they know they got an eight ish man at home. They just push through, pr try to pray it through that the Lord, cause they going through for better or for worse. Right? So technically this is, this right here is for better or for worse. Right? Cause <laughs> The way my vows is set up. But you know what else is crazy? Um, I, this is going to be a little sidebar conversation, right? But I was having a conversation with one of my girlfriends. And we were talking about the whole why men be cheating and why men be, um, you know, why men got the whole shebang at home, but they are still kick it to the side and go mess with some jump off or some groupie or some actress who is looking for an opportunity and a role to come up and I was told by a man a long time ago that sorry my nose itching what do you mean when your nose itch do I need to blow it um okay so no I'm serious what do you mean when your nose itch I know somebody talked about me ain't that what it mean when your nose itch somebody talking about you I don't know, but I'm clenching my butt, my nose itching. It's going downhill from here, y'all. Maybe I just need to log out and go put up a Christmas tree. But with that being said, a man told me a long time ago that when men have it all, per se, at home, but they still go out and do crazy stuff, it's because nine times out of ten, whoever they messing with on the side, they going to use, abuse, dog them, and do all the BS to them that they have too much respect to do to their wife. Now, that sounds like, too. how do you say too much respect 
when you're cheating on your wife. But there are some men who will not, like they'll do stuff to, they'll put three fingers in they side chick booty, but they ain't going to be running up on their wife and no three fingers in the anus trying to have a conversation like, so what do you think about remodeling the living room? No, they're not going to do that. Because yes, Shantae said it. Some women do what other women won't. Now, the only thing that I will say that I believed straight off the gate out of all this mess and all of these allegations was the fact that Celine is or appears to be a controlling guy. Appears to be. And now I'm only saying that based off of my experience with him and just the way that he carried himself like so stern and so like. Celine Akil has a I wish a N word would like essence about him. He just be sitting there like I wish a muff would. And I'll be like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm won't be the one. Now, if I say that now, don't take that the wrong way. I'm not saying like he tried to holler at me or nothing because he didn't even, and see, that's the other thing. Like when I saw him, I felt like I looked cute that day. That man ain't double, he ain't even double take, he ain't even pause on me. He didn't even pause. You know, sometimes a guy would be, you'd be like, hey, they'd be like, hey, how you doing? And then they call on, right? Just a glance. No. I was like, man, this man only got eyes for Mara. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm to, to, to psh, Yes. Yes. But I don't know. I don't know. It's so disappointing um, because I think about Mara and I just think about, okay, so let's, ah, my nose. Let's think about a, diff, a couple different scenarios. First case scenario, sis is lying all the way out. Just lie from beginning to lie to end. And I also feel like since our judicial system, our judicial system, I'm going to make sure I enunciate tonight. Since our judicial system is already raggedy AF, I would like someone to put something in place where if someone files a frivolous lawsuit that they in turn have to be held accountable and responsible. Now, I know that's what countersuits are about, but I'm talking about the women who like accuse men of doing things to them and the man didn't do it. I'm talking about people who just file ridiculous behind lawsuits like, oh, you stole my ICC logo. And I'm like, bitch, I created this thing by hand with a pencil and a sketchbook over eight years ago. Like, I feel like people need to be held accountable for filing frivolous lawsuits. So that's just my take on it if she's completely just making, just lying out the blue, okay? Um, at the same time, I wish that Mara lived in a state because I don't know. I, I think they live in Los Angeles and I don't know about Los Angeles laws, but I'm going to need my, um, my West Coast ICC friends, Shantae, the rest of y'all, let me know. I wish that if this is proven to be true or if Celine pulled Mara to the side and was like, baby, I'm sorry. I fucked up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I, I brought you into this. I'm sorry I did this. I effed up. I wish Mara could sue her. Remember the same way that man's wife sued Fantasia when Fantasia was messing with her husband? I want Mara to sue this chick. And then she need to handle Celine as she sees fit. But, okay, so that's the scenario if it's true, right? But at the same time, like, even if it's not, even if it is, the public humiliation that Mara has to endure behind her husband's activities, ridiculous. She don't deserve that. She don't deserve that type of embarrassment. Now, mind you, Mara need to hold her head high with her, because, you know, she team um, gray hair too, with her pretty self. Um, she needs to hold her head high because she didn't do anything. She didn't do anything wrong. She was just being a wonderful wife. And from what I saw, again, again, I'm on the outside looking in. I'm like this, right? I'm not in a house. I don't know. But the damage is done. The damage is done. Like now, everybody looking at Celine like, bruh, you ain't putting three fingers in the, you, you ain't putting three 
Like, what you do after that? Like, just sit there like this for the rest of the day or like, pew, 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 pew. Like, what you do? Like, soak your hand in Clorox, peroxide, apple cider vinegar. Like, what you do after that? Like, I want everybody held accountable. Celine, uh, Miss Amber right here. Everybody need to be held accountable. Now they don't drag Oprah in a mess and on TV. Now, here's the thing that I found strange. Warner Brothers said that they will be interviewing the staff and crew of Love Is and a Black Lightning in reference to the allegations. If Celine got domestic violence allegations against him, why the hell are you interviewing the staff and the crew? What the hell they got to do with it? Unless they was there and saw it. Or unless he allegedly messing with some of the staff and crew too. But that's dumb. Ain't that dumb? I don't know. I don't know. But it is what it is. Um, just very disappointing to say the least. If you are not familiar with this story. Because I know I didn't help out telling this story because my brain is mush right now but I, I gotta be consistent with my friday night i mean oh see i thought it was friday or saturday i've got to be consistent with my sunday night chats because we're now on sunday but i definitely wanted to talk to y'all about this because i wanted to get your feelings on it i wanted to get your ideas about it um but i know i've been all over the place about it because i just have so many thoughts and feelings so if you don't have or don't fully understand what's going on i made a video about this situation on youtube it is on the ice cream convos youtube page once you see it you will have a full understanding of what's going on here but this is this is terrible but so that's like if my husband filed a lawsuit against me claiming domestic violence and then people go to my job and interview all my co-workers hey eh? okay it's whatever Three fingers in a booty, cutie. <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna start taking pictures like, and y'all gonna know what I'm talking about. I'm sorry, no, I won't. That's petty. I'm not petty. I'm praying. I, I I'm not petty. I pray. I made that T-shirt. I'm not petty. I pray. But yeah, so wow. Okay, so I guess we'll go ahead and wrap the, and wrap up tonight. Shout out to all of my ICC friends. If this was your first time chatting with us, I see some new faces. I won't call you out by name and embarrass you and nothing like that. But welcome to tonight's chat. And thank you so much for joining us. Shout out to my OG ICC friend, Shantae, Cook, um, just all my ICC friends who are in Giselle and Stacy and and um, Cassandra and all just, just Chantel. Hey, Chantel. Chantel's late, but she's here. But yeah, so just shout out to all of my regular ICC friends and shout out to my new ICC friends if this is your first time um, joining us for tonight's chat. I am usually a little more lucid than this, but again, I'm on fumes. I'm on fumes and I'm dragging, but um, just so many different things that we wanted to talk about tonight and I definitely had to come on and um, I promise I'll be a little more rested up next week, maybe, perhaps. Just tune in and see. <laughs> But again, before you go, just please, please connect with ICC. Um, you can follow me. I'm on Instagram. I'm Zaviera underscore ice cream convos. I have a Facebook page as well. It is um, facebook.com forward slash um, Miss Zaviera B. And um, if you don't know how to spell my name, I think some of my ICC friends will help you. And um, just please subscribe to our YouTube page. I'm still trying to get to 1,000 YouTube subscribers, which is ridiculous i thought i would be there by now but apparently y'all don't want to kick it with me on facebook i'm on on youtube but i'm gonna need y'all to do so because eventually i'm gonna shift everything over to youtube and i want to build a ice cream convos channel channel because i mean it's a channel because it's you know it's our page but i mean a channel channel you know what i'm saying yeah so um so anyway thank you guys so much for tuning in tonight thank you for indulging me for an hour and 18 minutes and um, I just hope all of you have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful night. Yes, LaShonda. LaShonda, I know that you've been an ICC, you ICC veteran. I'm sorry. You know, I'm sorry. I'm be calling out people's names. And they be like, how's she going to say I'm a newbie? I'm a veteran. So yes, LaShonda, I do know that you are a veteran, that you've been rocking with us for a while. Um, so with that being said, have a great night and God bless you all. Stay out of trouble. And be sure to visit icecreamconvos.com every single day. And, and thank you in advance for commenting and sharing and liking all of our posts, even if Facebook don't show them to you. But, um, oh, I'm bringing back the ICC app. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I had got rid of the app earlier this year because I had just a quick, just between us, speaking of putting my business on the internet, right? I had a tantrum earlier this year. And I was really, really mad one night because something didn't go my way and it was something business related. So then I got mad with everything that wasn't going my way. And I said, you know what? If I don't like it, I'm getting rid of it tonight. And I got rid of the ICC app and now I regret it. So I'm big. I'm a big enough woman to regret that I acted out of impulse and I got rid of the ICC app and now I miss it. So I am going to get the ICC app back because the ICC app is much, much, much more convenient. And if you if you're shopping on Amazon for the holiday season, we have an Amazon store. Now, mind you, the Amazon store has it's just curated products from Amazon. But if you don't see something that you like in our store, even if you use our link to go to Amazon to shop, we will get credit for it. And last but certainly not least, I have, I think, three, two or three ICC hoodies left. So I got the first first shipment in on Friday. So I'll be mailing those out tomorrow. And then I have my next shipment should be going like or coming in like the week after. Okay. And this is the ICC sweatshirt. It's our logo with the rhinestone. Yep. I'm sorry. I was clenching. I was like. So I think I'll be clinching for the rest of the night. Like, But if you're interested in getting one of those, you can visit icecreamcombos.com for it slash shop. Okay. So have a great night and I'll see you guys later. Bye. <laughs>